everyone welcome back to my youtube channel welcome back to another tutorial it's me ig and i'm back with a new tutorial on today's tutorial we're going to diy this beautiful gown that you are seeing on the screen if today is your first time of stopping by welcome my returning subscribers you guys are amazing thanks for your amazing support so guys i have this isiago with me do you see it i got exactly the same so i'm going to use this to achieve this gown remember the upper part of this gown you can use an off shoulder block to achieve it or you can use a corset top with cup to achieve it so i'm going to use a corset top to achieve it so now we are going to first achieve the down part as you can see the down part has a slit on the left hand side so we are going to achieve it after that we are going to draft our corset i've made series of videos on how to draft a corset you can choose any one of them to achieve it so guys let us get started now guys i folded my material in two to achieve our down part of this gown we are making remember the gown we are making is 60 three inches length so we're going to minus the half length that is from the shoulder to the waist the shoulder to the waist is 18 inches when you minus 18 inches from 63 inches you're going to have 45 inches so the skirt part is going to give us 45 inches so that is what we are going to use as our length now you can see i measured out some inches these inches is going to serve as our allowance for the slit remember the gown has a slit on the left hand side so now this one and a half inch that i measured do you see it one and a half inch i measured it to where the length is going to be that is what i measured so later we are going to transfer it to the normal position that we are going to have the slit but now we have created our allowance so that we are not going to run short of material so all our measurement will come after the one and a half inches allowance so we are going to start all our measurements here and now our starting point is here our starting point is here so let's measure our 45 inches as the length remember this gown is having a train at the back it is a trumpet gown with train so we are going to also achieve the train on this project also so here is our starting point we are going to measure 45 inches so here is our 45 inches plus one inch seam allowance so we are going to also make it to this side that is we are going to mark 46 inches now we are going to insert our waist measurement from here the waist measurement we are working with is waist we are working with the waist measurement of 33 that is what we are working with. So 33, you divide it by 4. You are going to have 8.5. So we are going to add our 8.5 here. And also add our allowance. Remember, it's going to have that. So, so 1 inch that. And also, we are going to add 2 inches as our seam allowance. 2 inches as our seam allowance. So now let's come down to the hip from the waist we are working with to the hip length that we are working with is it nine do you see it we are working with the nine so on this nine inches by length measurement and the hip we are working with is 43 43 divided by four we are going to be left with 10.75 so 10.75 is going to be here then we are going to add half inch ease for the lining and also we are going to add our two inches seam allowance do you see it and from now from the waist to the knee is 21 inches here is our 21 inches so on this 21 inches we are going to go up by some inches to allow the person to walk freely so we are going to go up by two inches that is now we are going to mark our knee length to 19 inches so here is going to be our new 
knee length at 19 inches so that the person can walk freely. When you mark it exactly at 21, the person cannot walk freely. Except in a situation where it is photo shoot, you can mark there. The person is only standing. So now I'll mark also the length here. That's the length and the allowance. So now this is our knee length. So now let us see what we have on the waist. On the waist, we have 13 and we have 13 and a half inches on the hip. Remember, this is our hip. We have 11, 10.75 and we added also half inch as our allowance and also two and a half inches. So now let's check. We have 13 and a half inches or 13 and quarter inches we have. We have 13 and quarter inches. So now we are going to remove something and place it on the knee. We are not going to take the full measurement we have here. So here we are going to take out two inches. So now taking out two inches, we are going to be left with 11 and quarter inches. So let's make it 11 and a half inches. That is what we are going to put at the knee. So from here now we are going to connect it to the down but now we are going to achieve how we want it to flow on the down remember the hip we are working with is 10.75 let's add our hip first here is 10.75 then how do we want it to be wide so for this the wideness i'm going to add extra 15 inches because I want it to be wide. But remember, the back is the most important because that is where the train is coming. So I'm going to add extra 15 inches to it. So here is my 15 inches. So from this knee now, I'm going to connect to these 15 inches that we added here. So all together on the floor, we have 26 and a half inches. That is what we have on this down part of it. So when you open it, we are going to have 52 inches. So now, of 53 inches, we are going to have. So now let's connect it. Do you see it now? So this is how we want it to flow on the down. You can go as more as you want you all as less as you want but now let us connect the upper parts so from the waist we connect to the hip and also come down to the knee do you see it so on this down part i'm going to come up on this down part, I'm going to come up by 2 inches. Then I'll now connect it so that it's going to be smooth. Do you see it now, guys? So this is our measurement. Remember, we are going to work on this front panel later. After we have cut out our back panel, we are going to still work on the front panel to determine where our slit is going to be so now i'm going to cut it out and we'll use it to cut out the back panel which is going to have the train so let us cut it out this is our front panel do you see our front panel i've placed it on my material that i folded remember this gown is going to have a train at the back so now we are going to achieve our train at the back so now Remember, we added one and a half inches for the darts, that, that for the slit that is going to be on the front panel. So we are equally going to use that one and a half inch at the back as the zip allowance. So it is the same. So we are going to reserve it as our zip allowance. So from here now, I added extra material. And what I added to measure it, I added about 16 inches. I added about 16 inches at this back side to achieve the train. 
So I added it. And on the floor length, I added some extra inches also. Do you see it? I added about 12 inches. Do you see it now? So on this side, I added 16 inches to achieve our train. And on this side, on this downside, I added 12 inches because we are going to connect from this point to down to this point. So that is what we are going to do. So now we are going to, from this point, because the front panel and the back panel has to match at the side. So now from here, I'm going to connect it to meet. So I'm going to cover it from here. I'm going to cover it in this form to achieve this train because I want the train to be full. So I'm going to cover it from this side. Do you see it? I'm going to cover it to join the 16 inches on this side. Do you see it? To join the 16 inches that I added as the train. So I have covered it from the side to join the 16 inches at the down. Remember we added 12 inches and here we added 16 inches so on this back side now so this is the way we are going to cut the down part of it to make it flow to have that train so now let's go to the back side so now this is our back side that is the side of the zip remember we are using still maintaining an, our one and a half inch as our zip allowance so now from the waist from our waist to our 19 inches is the knee so i'm going to come up by four inches that is at 15 inches i'm going to come up there this is where i'm going to now from here i'll connect it to this point here because i want the train to flow so now let's connect it so i will now use my ruler to connect it So now I'll put my ruler in this form. Do you see it? To connect it to achieve the train. You can do lesser than this. You can do higher than this. It depends on what you want. The train depends on your choice. Being a wedding cloth, so I want the train to be full. So that is why I, I did it in this form. So the next thing now is to cut it out. So now let's cut it together. So now we are maintaining our one and a half inch as our zip allowance. Do you see it? So we have cut it out. So let's cut the down. So now we are cutting the sides. So now guys, do you see our train? Do you see it? Do you see our train now? So this is our train. This, do you see our train? Do you see it? Do you see how the train is going to be? 
so this is our done part our done part has been cut so now let's work on the front panel to achieve our slit now guys having cut out our front and back panel we are now going to determine our that remember the that to determine it you need your nipple to nipple measurement and the nipple to nipple measurement we are working with is eight inches divide eight by two you have four inches add it half inch that is eight and a half that is four and a half that we need as our nipple to nipple measurement that is the half of it remember we started here by giving one and a half inch as the same allowance that we are going to use for our slit on the front so this is our one and a half inches that we measured out till the length to reserve it as our slit allowance so we started our main measurement after the one and a half inch so we are also going to insert our nipple to nipple measurement starting after the one and a half inch so here is the one and a half inch i'll place my tape and i'll measure 4.5 here is my 4.5 this is my 4.5 remember this that that we have measured here is only for the right side of our skirt the left side of our skirt is going to have a slit so we are now going to determine where this slit is going to be so now this is our that for the right side so we now come down by five inches come down by five inches and on each side of it of the dart you take half inch do you see it and you connect it to these five inches the normal way to achieve our dart so this dart now is for the right hand side so let's determine the dart of the left hand side so to determine that we are going to open our skirt we are going to open it now guys i have opened it up do you see it remember this line that you are seeing is the line where we started our measurement which is the center of our marking this line that we marked is the center of our marking so from this line now that is the center of our marking i'm going to take in another measurement of the dart from this line so i'm going to measure four and a half inches from this line also and here is our four and a half inches so this is the new dart line that we are going to use for the slit so i'm going to now look at it this is it so remember when we now open it up the allowance that we left the one and a half inch allowance that we left for the slit is now three inches because on fold it's one and a half so when you open it up is three inches so now after this four and a half inches which is this main that now that we now added from the center here i'm going to add that three inches of our slit opening so now i'm adding the three inches that we left as our allowance and these three inches i'll divide it in two which is going to be one and a half so i'll mark on this one and a half so on this one and a half now i'm going to now cut it open as our slit so on this side we have one and a half on this side we have one and a half so this one and a half we have is going to be the allowance for our slit so let's measure what we have so that we can get it right so from this center line now i will measure it to the one and a half so i have six inches do you see it so from this center line that is the the other measurement of our dart which is 4.5 plus the one and a half inch which is the same allowance for the dart i have six inches so i'm going to mark it like this so that i'll mark it through to have a straight cutting when i'm cutting so i'm going to mark six inches all through i'll mark six inches marking it in this form is to get a straight line you don't make a mistake do you see it 
So I'm going to now take my ruler to roll it. So now I'm going to make it into a straight line so that I can cut it properly. So guys, this is where we are going to cut open to insert our slate. So on this side, we have one and a half inch as our seam allowance. And on this side, we have one and a half inch as our seam allowance. Do you see it? That was why we now reserve the one and a half inch on fold. And when you open it, it's three inches. So now I'm going to cut it open. So guys, do you see it? So when we now sew it up in this form, when we now sew it up in this form, let's pin it and see. So guys, do you see it? So when we now sew it up, we will now have our slit. Do you see it? You can equally put it on yourself. Do you see it? You can equally put it on yourself to see. Do you see it? So when we now sew it, the slit is going to be on the left hand side at the right side of it. Do you see it guys? So now the next thing I have to do is just to use it to cut out my lining. And I will be back for us to start fixing it. I'm going to use crinoline to fold the down part of it. I will use crinoline to fold it because it's going to have lining. I will use crinoline. So I'm going to cut out the uh, lining for us to fix. And also the back panel, I would like us to work a little thin on the back panel. So this is the back panel now. So let's just do a little adjustment on the back panel. So guys, this is our back panel. I want us to just do a little adjustment on it. Remember, on this back panel, we left one and a half inch as our seam allowance also. This is the one and a half inch. So now, I'm going to come down by one and a half inch until we get to where we now start curving it here. Do you see it? So I want to come in by one inch to make it to be fitted at the back. So now I'll come in by one inch. You can come in by half inch, but I want to come in by one inch or three quarter inch. Let me come in by three quarter inch. Do you see it? Because I want it to be curved. I want it to be fitted at the back. So from this three quarter inch, I'll just curve it to meet to the hip line. Do you see it? To meet and from here also, just curve it down because I want it to have more shape at the back. Do you see it? So we are going to cut it out. So just to give it more shape at the back. That is why we came in by a quarter inch. And you stop on your hip before, two inches before the hip line. Do you see it, guys? So it's going to make it to have more shape at the back. Do you see it? Remember, this is our train. So now the next thing to do is just to use it to cut out the lining. And I'll be now, guys. Having cut out our down parts, we are going to now cut out the upper parts of our gown that we are making. This is the pattern that I'm going to use. I've drafted it. I've made a well detailed tutorial on how to draft 
a cosette top with cup i've made it and i've made also videos on it so i'll link it on the description box below for you guys to check it out so this is my pattern which i have drafted and this is the back pattern the back pattern is not going to have zip it's going to have a loop at the back so on the upper side of it i came in by one and a half inch and on the waist i came in by one one quarter inch you can equally do one and a half and one and a half on the waist but i did one and a half on the upper part and on the lower part which is the hip i came in by one one quarter because it doesn't have zip it's going to have a loop so we have to take some inches out of the main measurement so i've made a well detailed tutorial on how to achieve this please check it out so now i'm going to place it on my material to cut it out for us to now fix them together now guys i have cut out our paddles this is the front panel these are the cup do you see it this is the back panel we are going to add a loop to it it's not going to have a zip and this is the side this is the center of the front and this is the side and i've cut all the linings do you see it so i'll go ahead now to join it together and this is our skirt that down part of it i've cut out also the lining i'm going to turn it with crinoline on the down part i'm going to use crinoline to hem it so i'm going to fix them together and i'll be back for us to see how it looks i'm going to go ahead to fix the cup the panels together and also turn the lining with, this, with the main body of the skirt and use crinoline to hem it and I'll be back. Now guys, I have joined our panels. Do you see it? This is the front panel. Do you see the cup? I've made series of videos on how to join the cup. So I've joined the cup and I've used the lining to turn it. I'm doing inseam finishing on it and also I added a little boning to it. Do you see it? So this is the front panel. So, and on the down part of it, this is our front part, which we now cut open the slit. And I've used lining to also turn it. I added gum stay. I added crinoline to it. Do you see it? So I did also inseam finishing. So this is it. So this is part of the slit. And so this is the other one. I've also turned it. And also do the same with crinoline. And the back panel, these are the back panels. So I've also turned it. Do you see it? And these are the top. That is the upper part of the back panel. Do you see it? I've also turned it with the lining. And also taking our darts. Remember, it's going to have a loop. It's not going to have zip. So the next thing to do now is just to join it together. So the front panel, this is the front panel. I will now turn it in this form. So I will close it. I will now turn it in this form. Do you see it to achieve our mm -hmm. slit? So you now measure where you want it to be. That is the length of the slit. So let me check the length that i would like to have i would like mine to be at 14 inches so i will stop sewing from here so i will come in by one inch then i will sew till this 14 inches then i will stop and i will now have my slit so let me pin it first for you guys to see So guys, do you see it? So this is our slit. This is going to be open. Do you see it? So now I will now use our upper part to join to it. Do you see it? I will join the upper part to it. Do you see it, guys? So the next thing now to do is to take it to the machine to do that. And also the back panels. I will take the back panel. Also, these are the back panel i will take it and also also take this to join to it do you see it remember it's going to have 
a loop at the back so i'm going to join it so i'll do this join it then join the front and the back together using our one inch that we left as our seam allowance then we'll come back to fix the sleeve i fix our sleeve do you see it i'll fix the front and back together and also fix our sleeve and i went ahead to use these white beads to decorate it to make it look exactly that like what we are replicating do you see how beautiful it is so on this breast cup i'm going to use also this to decorate here i'm going to add another one also to this side so, and i will use my gum i will not tag it but i will use gum to pl place it on the body so i will do that put it on the mannequin i will see the final look now guys this is the final look of our gown do you see how beautiful it is so lovely do you see it and that's the opening the slit that we gave to it do you see it so if this tutorial has been helpful to you don't forget to like share and comment on my videos and if you have not subscribed consider subscribing love you guys and see you in my next video for now bye bye